Come on inside. Come on. What's wrong? Come inside. All right, I'm down here to check the horse's water. My trusty beast of a puppy over there. Seven month old puppy. You can see topping it off. You can see ice formed on top. It's cold enough. It's about 30, I think it's 36, 38, but it feels like 32, 31 maybe with the wind. But they love it. They love it. They When it's this temperature, 30 degrees, they're laying out in the middle of the open field, way up over that hill and all the way down the hill, there is probably about 20, 30 acres away is where they're sleeping in the open, right in the middle. They have a walk-in over here, which they use when it's a dreadful 75 degrees outside in the summer. But right now they love this weather, 30 degrees. I'm gonna go get them some grain, topping off their water bucket here so that when they come down, they got some fresh water. All right, my dog thinks he's gonna tell my horses who's in charge, dumb puppy. These are my two boys, my two horses, and they are both quarter horses. The buckskin, which is the whiter one, is 15.1 hands high, and the bay, the brown one, is 15.2 hands high, and a hand is four inches. So that's the measurement conversion of what a hand means. And the number after hands, so 15.2, the point two means two more inches. So 15 hands, which are four inches each, point two, and two more inches on top. So the buckskin horse is, that's the white one, is 15.1 hands. So that means he is 61 inches tall. And you measure to the top of the withers which is at right there at the end of the mane, the lowest part of the mane on the neck. That's the top of the shoulder blade of the front leg. And then the bay or brown horse is 15.2 hands high, so that makes him 62 inches tall at the shoulders. Here's my buckskin. He's my little bit of a jerkopotamus. This is my bay. He's a sweet boy. He loves the attention. Loves the pets, don't ya? Loves his food, especially. You're a good boy. All right, we got our wood that we chop up throughout the year as trees fall down on the property. My husband chops up the trees, turns them into firewood. And this is the wood barn. My hands are cold, everything hurts when your hands are cold. Okay, so, so firewood pile. And then we just rotate it. Right now we're working on these two piles over here. We separate out any pine, of course, and don't burn that in the house. That goes for the outside fire pit. Um, but oldest in our pile over here is the newest or youngest, greenest stuff. So that will have to get seasoned for a year or two before we dig into that. And I'll show you a tree he just had to cut down. Big old tree that fell across the path there in the last big windstorm. But there's always fresh firewood for him to cut up for us. Miles, say hi, Miles. Oh, hi. Got mud on your nose. To be digging in the nose. That's my puppy. That's my baby. Here is the tree I was telling you about that just recently fell down the last windstorm, and this is a really cool time lapse video of my husband chopping it up into manageable size logs. Because it is an oak tree, they are extremely heavy, the logs. Some of those bigger ones he won't even be able to lift. But he needs to get them over to the wood barn so that he can chop them up into manageable size firewood pieces for me to be able to bring into the house later. And he does chop them up manually into firewood, split them. Because we do not have a log splitter at this time, that would make his job a whole lot easier, I'm sure. But there's the resulting pile of wood from that one single tree. So you can see how we don't run out of firewood. 
I love that old cabin. It's over 100 years old. It's pretty cool. Go. Alrighty, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you do, if you like it and subscribe, hit the alarm bell for alert notifications so you can see any new videos we make. And this is just a quick clip of our own personal obby on 1,000 pound bales of hay from our field. Thanks for watching. Bye.